How's it going, everyone? Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. We're on the inside of the FT 101 EE. This is my retro radio being rebuilt by Paul Whiskey Whiskey for United Sierra. <laughs> that is pretty dirty looking on the inside. And today, Paul is going to pretty much complete the electronic rebuild refurb of this radio for me. Next video up, we'll get into some contacts. Now, before I show the work by Paul, I want to share something from Whiskey 7 Bravo Whiskey Alpha Joe, a friend that I've gotten to know through uh, my YouTube channel, through Amateur Radio. This is one of the coolest things about Amateur Radio. Joe lives on the other side of the country, and we have become friends through my YouTube channel and through Amateur Radio. How often does this happen? Somebody we would never have met any other way we meet through amateur radio, and then they go and they whet your appetite for what their shack looks like. Those photos are of Joe's shack and some of his awesome equipment. He makes me jealous just a little bit, and I imagine you as well. So, Paul, take it away. Let's go ahead and watch the rebuild as Paul gets into the guts of this thing and gets it ready to operate. Okay, Bob, so I see that somebody has put Sylvania tubes in here and I bet you they did not do the coupling drive area which is a no-no because that is like a new engine in your car right here that's your new engine and underneath here is your used oil and they kept their used oil in a new engine and that's he, a no-no he's gonna fix that's this the coupling me, drive area that's where all the heat's at here's your serial number and you can see him say, here's your serial number. This is his process. Every time he sends a customer a clip of the radio, he makes sure you know it's your radio. Paul restores FT-101s exclusively, the E-Series. Um, and he has a Facebook group called Restoring the FT-101. I'll leave a link in the description below just in case I didn't get that name exact. He only works on these specific radios, but if you're interested in this technology and that group, I'll leave a link so you can uh, join in and watch the fun as other people go ahead and get their radios fixed. And again, here is your radio. There's your serial number. And normally you have to change this 100 microfarad to a 10 picofarad for the American tubes. And it looks like they didn't do it. Somebody didn't know that or whatever. But this radio is not that old. And why the two original tubes didn't last is beyond me. So let's go ahead and get that changed out. Um, Paul works on these radios in his spare time. He has a full-time job just like me. And so you'll see him go from clip to clip and there might have been a full day that's transpired in between. And I think next up, we're gonna see him talk more about uh, that capacitor and get it changed out. There's your serial number, your radio, Bob. And changing out the capacitor right here to a 10 microfarad for the US tube. So. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing. Then I'll get down in the coupling drive area. I still got to clean the band switch, uh, the fan motor. All that is already clean. I done did all that, so she's looking good. All right, so there's your serial number, Bob. Just changed out the cap for you. You see right there that new silver mica. And then there's the white wires I was talking about right down there, that one and that one. They, they look okay. They don't look burnt or anything, so I think they're fine. So I think it's really incredible that somebody doing a restoration keeps me in the loop every step of the way. You know, wouldn't it be great if we had auto mechanics that did this or somebody working on one of the appliances in our home? This is unheard of. It's one of Paul's really nice features and touches that he adds when he works with a customer. So I think we're going to get into that coupling drive area next uh, because we switched out those tubes. All right, so here is your radios, your serial number, and I'm doing the coupling drive area, so I've already removed the components in this area, and even the one that's buried in between the band switch, so I'm going to rebuild this area. You'll see some new terminal strip, some capacitors, resistors, uh, and one buried in between there, and then going down here to the ground, so... That's the coupling drive area. All right, let's go ahead and get a look at the after now. 
All right, so here is your serial number. There is the coupling drive area, capacitors, resistors, terminal strip. Looks good to me. The one with the purple wire that's buried in between there. All this checks out. So now I'm kind of getting ready to put it back together. So that's where we're at. Looking good. So when I first um, started talking about this radio, a couple of people reached out and said, make sure that you change out these capacitors on the regulator board. Of course, Paul knew to do that. Hey Bob, so there is your regulator board and there's all the electrolytics and the mylar that I got to replace right here, that brown one. But that goes right here. That's the regulator board. So that is where your bias, your voltage and, and all that is. So I'll be, Changing all these parts here. I just pulled them off the board. So now the after There's all these caps There's your new board looks nice all new electrolytics and I put higher voltage in there where they got like 16 volt. I put 50 volts in there I use quality parts all from Mauser a reputable electronic manufacturers now, I think what a lot of people don't realize is when you buy these radios, you're not plugging it into a power supply like we do with modern shack gear. My FT991A, my 7300, I plugged those all into a power supply and pulled DC out of those power supplies. These old radios, they've got the power supply internal and it has a two prong plug. So here in the States, I'm missing my ground. Well, here's Paul's solution for that. Three wires, so you got the ground, the neutral, and the hot. There's the plug end on it. So that's what I'm working on. And your radio's over here on my bench. Got the covers on it, so we're coming along. All right, so there we have it. We have a machine that's almost all put back together again. Paul's going to do some testing for me. He'll make some contacts and we'll show that in the next video. And I'm gonna see if I can get on the air myself, if I can figure out how to heat this up, get those tubes glowing and actually get it working.